Good morning. I'd like to thank Dr. Melanie Harvey for inviting me, the organizers of the Porter Colloquium for their work, and all of you who made the effort to be here this morning. As a scholar and critic, my work focuses on global contemporary artists and their works that are emblematic of transcultural aesthetics, cosmopolitan agents who create links and cross boundaries between cultures through art. In today's pa paper, I'm happy to share my project within the African diaspora, one of the world's most resilient and fertile fields of transcultural exchange. An expansive and inclusive understanding of identity in the diaspora is often expressed in popular music. This quotation from roots reggae legend Peter Tosh describes diaspora as a transnational African identity rooted in a place of origin. One new approach to theorizing diaspora in academy comes from Michelle Wright, whose ontology of diaspora is black in time, an approach that expands a focus on the middle passage to more diverse experiences of diasporic identity. My new research investigates the relationship of African artists' identities to global diasporic culture through works that perform images from the archive of photography and art history. Just as Tosh identifies all black people with Africa, recent works by African photographers Samuel Faso and Omar Victor Diop construct identities within the diaspora, framing themselves and their blackness as global, influential, and cosmopolitan, citizens of the world. Today I will share with you a small section of this project that draws on a history of images spanning continents and centuries with a focus on the photographic archive of the African American diaspora as a source of cosmopolitan identity and influence in the world of contemporary art. Samuel Faso's photographic part practice participates in the history of studio portrait photography on the African continent. After fleeing the Biafra conflict and apprenticing in a studio in Cameroon, at the age of 14, Faso opened his own studio while practitioners like Malik Sidibe and Seydou Keita are entering museums through their portraits of Africans, Faso's work eventually departed the conventional subject matter of the studio portrait, developing into a contemporary art practice in which Faso is the primary subject of his work. Early on in his studio practice, Faso began, began to take pictures of himself at the end of the day to finish rolls of film. In a repressive political context that limited free expression, in the privacy of his studio, Faso emulated the dress and attitude of African and American music stars performing for his own camera. Fashionable shoes, sunglasses, and even a deftly deployed pair of dishwashing gloves provided costume for the teenaged professional, whose self-esteem and success developed into a decades-long art practice of representing himself. In projects ranging from his grandfather's ideal role for him as a traditional healer to commissioned work for the French retailer magazine Tati, Faso's art has explored politics, the performance of gender, transnational relations emerging from Chinese business interests in Africa, and the depths of his own personal tragedy experienced through the death of a friend. I define Faso's photography as performative self-portraiture, a distinct practice in contemporary art where performance art and fine art photography intersect. Performative self-portraiture is a space where the representation of identity is fluid, but where authorship of the image reinforces the self-same nature of choosing to operate the camera and be the object of its lens. Faso scholar Ingrid Holzel argues the photograph is not explained by index theory alone, but is a semiotic sign of its author. Holzel examines Faso's body of work as a series of differing instances of what she calls self-photography, a model that allows for self-portraiture, as well as images of the photographer that do not constitute portraiture, but fictitious portraits and photographs of potential and imagined selves. After Halsell pu published her work, work theorizing self-photography through the work of Faso, he created new bodies of work referencing historical subjects that challenge her nuanced theorization of his photographic practice. African Spirits of 2008 recreates 14 iconic photographs of the African diaspora of the 20th century, aestheticizing the politics of resistance through engagement with the photographic archive. Faso's selections highlight nodes of political power in the diaspora through African and African American figures of global influence in government, social movements, arts, and athletics. His performative embodiment of African national leadership, artists of negritude, and African American social movements, including the civil rights movement, the Nation of Islam, and black power, raise questions about what kind of photography Faso is practicing in African spirits. What happens to Faso's work when Holzel's fictitious portrait is historical? Is he performing an archival past, inhabiting historic images as an actor does a role? Photography scholar Brendan Wattenberg claims that Faso, along with other African artists, performs the archive by enacting and indexing historical memory. 
Art historians Okui and Wezor and Chike Okeke Aglulu conclude African spirits is a political allegory of African self-representation. Recognizing Faso's encounter with the archive constellates a history of political resistance that emphasizes the 1960s. The questions multiply. Why did he create the work in the new century? And how has that work affected international interest in Faso that has been gaining momentum since the 1990s? With its roots firmly planted in the international context of the Venice Biennale, African Spirits negotiates an increasingly cosmopolitan image of the artist. Through the archive of the diaspora and its icons of resistance, out of the transnational exhibition context of Venice, Faso refashions his own appearance as one of many, or many as one, bringing new intellectual and political force to his performance for the camera. Drawing on an array of luminaries of African descent, I argue Faso constructs a plural personal identity of cosmopolitan black consciousness that operates transculturally across nations, religions, and genders. Checklist Luanda Pop, the exhibition in the African Pavilion at the 2007 Venice Biennale, brought a st distinguished roster of non-African and white African artists into conversation with an expansive survey of established and emerging African contemporary artists. Outside the pavilion hung a banner of photographs of distinguished global citizens, ranging from Caribbean Voices for Black Liberation, Franz Fanon, and Bob Marley, to pioneers of nonviolent resistance, Mohandas K. Gandhi, and Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In his study of African artists' engagement with the archive, photography scholar Brendan Wattenberg locates the origins of Faso's African spirits in this banner of diasporic accomplishment and inspiration. Faso's virtuoso performance for the still camera, recreating fine details in the costumes, facial expressions, hairlines, and postures of such an array of recognizable people, sets African spirits into high relief as one of his most important bodies of work. The distinctive focus on the politics of diaspora and decolonization creates a series of specific associations that he simultaneously embodies and celebrates. His notable focus on African Americans and post-colonial African leaders becomes even more significant in historical context as Americans elected Barack Obama President of the United States in 2008, creating an important legacy of African leadership in the Americas, underscoring the timely and historic dimensions of his project. The wide-ranging ideologies, political actions, and responsibilities constellated in African spirits is both precise and expansive, emphasizing Faso's curatorial approach to the archive as a report repository of ideas as well as iconic images. Most of the photos in the series are recreations of specific and highly recognizable photos from the archive, with the notable exception of Angela Davis, who, photo, who Faso imagines in a conventional portrait that turns on the punctum of not her afro, but on the button that symbolizes her politics of black power and feminism simultaneously. Faso's mastery of such details is also found in his spirit of Malcolm X, perfecting details of his source images down to the ring with the lunar crescent and star proclaiming his Islam. Reflecting on the gathering together of the diverse and contradictory political positions as King, Davis, and X, I see Faso modeling a cosmopolitan point of view through a complex intellectual sphere of radical politics. As scholars contend with and develop a variety of approaches to the cosmopolitan, from Kwame Appiah's ethical encounter to Marsha Meskimen's home made in any part of the world, the cosmopolitan invites a multiplicity of perspectives. The question raised by Susan Buckmorse around the political is most potent here. What would a radical cosmopolitan space look like that its task as refusing to align itself with a particular political position, even a progressive position? With African spirits, Samuel Faso performs this radical cosmopolitanism without a refusal of per particulars, but with a multifaceted specificity that marks Enweiser and Okeke Aglulu's political allegory, not only as African, but culturally cosmopolitan. Emblematic of the intersecting intellectual context and sociological complexity of Faso's choice of spirits is his reperformance of Muhammad Ali's April 1968 Esquire cover. The feature story, written in the wake of Ali's refusal to serve in Vietnam, constellates a confluence of events, symbols, and negotiations that can be seen as a microcosm of the radical inclusivity of Faso's project. The image is a reflection of the cosmopolitan dilemma of Ali's politics. His Islamic faith and resistance to conflict with people of color in Asia marked Ali as an increasingly cosmopolitan actor in the American cultural sphere of the late 1960s. The photo shoot organized by George Lois was complicated by Ali's refusal to 
uh, contradict his religion with the performance of Christianity. To accommodate his beliefs, Lois contacted uh, Elijah Muhammad and asked his permission to create the image. Uh, Muhammad asked him about his background and his intentions, where Lois pointed towards persecution and martyrdom in relationship to Ali's politics. Uh, Muhammad approved after asking Lois about his age and other personal elements uh, of his identity, including his religious beliefs. In the original photo, the weight of the arrows had to be carefully supported by invisible wires, making their trajectories appear natural and Ali seem authentically wounded, a complex representation which Faso reperforms in a manner which is hard to imagine considering he is both the subject of the photo and its photographer. As an emblem of my larger argument about activism and radical cosmopolitanism, Lois's eulogy of Ali encapsulates the imp cultural importance of Ali, saying, he was an incredible human being and one of the great Americans of all time. He was a true superhero of American history, and he was a worldwide ambassador of courage and conviction. Ali and the other icons of African spirits allow Faso to identify with the heroic, exceptional, and profound accomplishments of the people and moments he forms. When viewed as a response to his experience of the transnational con art context of the Venice Biennale and Czechless Luanda Pop, in its global context, African Spirits operates as a work of cosmopolitan identity formation, an exceptional and likely canonical work coinciding with the beginning of the historic leadership of Barack Obama, representing an identity that is black in time and space. As Stuart Hall wrote, Identities are the names we give the different ways we are positioned by and position ourselves within narratives of the past. From the archive of activism, Faso framed a new self for the world of global contemporary art. An expanded sense of identity in a cosmopolitan world develops through the archive and its reproduction, not only in mass media, but also through the art world. The accessibility of histo and historic importance of Faso's chosen subjects and his artwork has been underscored since its first reception in 2008. Widely exhibited, it is increasingly important to powerful institutions of modern and contemporary art. This is best exemplified by its inclusion in Unfinished Conversations, an exhibition of new acquisitions for the permanent collection currently on display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Looking at cosmopolitan identities in global context, the many layers of culture and diaspora of interest to Faso and others shows a way in which a world embracing transcultural aesthetic is a route to worldwide appreciation and advancement. Thank you.